Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're back on uh, physicsclassroom.com in the topic static electricity, talking about the concept builder electric field. So, what is an electric field? An electric field is a region in space that, um, uh, in which if you put a charge there, it would experience a force. In this particular concept builder, we aren't looking at the electric field itself and the effect it has on a charge. Instead, we're looking at a charge that's going to produce an electric field. Okay, Because we know if we put a charge next to another charge, it's going to experience a force. That means the charge must be creating a magnetic an, an electric field around it that will push that other charge. So this is the model that we use as physicists to describe how that other charge knows to be pushed because it's in the electric field from the first one. As you go on, you won't have to have a charge creating an electric field. There are other ways that electric fields can be created, which is why the idea of electric fields was created to begin with instead of just saying it somehow knows. So um, here's our equation that we use. And this equation describes the electric field that is created by a charge, and we made it capital Q because it's the one that's creating the charge, divided by R squared. You'll notice this is very similar to Coulomb's law, which is electric force. The only thing we'd have to add is a little Q here, and then we'd have the amount of force. So if we take out what that charge is that's being put into the electric field, then we can find out how many newtons of force there are for each Coulomb of charge that is put into this electric field at a given place. Okay, as you know from our discussion of uh, Coulomb's law, K is the electrostatic constant or Coulomb's constant, and it is a given value for our universe. So no matter where you go in our universe at any point in time, as far as we know, this number will be the number you'll get for Q. So if you go to a different parallel universe, maybe not, but in our universe, this is the number, 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Q is the amount of charge uh, of the object that's creating the field measured in Coulombs. And R is the distance between, well, it's not really between the two objects anymore. It's really between the object and the point in space at which we're measuring the electric field. All right. Now, in this particular concept builder, you aren't going to be calculating with this. Instead, you're going to be looking at the relationships in the equation. Okay. So we can see that E and Q are directly proportional. We see that written here. That's how we say it's directly proportional, meaning as this Q gets twice as big, then the electric field that it produces will be twice as big. If the uh, charge is one third the value, then the electric field it produces will be one third. Uh, it changes uh, as one variable changes, the other one changes by the same factor in the same direction. Divide by three, divide by three. On the other hand, the distance between the charge and the point in space in which, at which we're measuring the electric field, that has a different relationship. We can see it's down in the denominator and it's squared. So we get an inverse quadratic proportionality or an inverse square law, as uh, you might, depending on who, who your physics teacher is or what physics book you're reading, you'll see either inverse quadratic or inverse square. So as R changes, E changes by the square of the factor in the opposite direction. So if they, if you pick a point that's uh, half the distance to the to the charge to this charge if you pick a point that's half the distance to that charge half or two times less dividing by two you're going to square that two that's four and because it's in the denominator we have to flip that around and so instead of dividing by four we're going to multiply and eat the electric field will get four times bigger so when you get twice as close to the charge the field is four times bigger Okay, or half the distance to the charge would be another way to say that. Let's take a look at how that plays out in our relationships. So the first apprentice level uh, type task is called ranking tasks, and it reads as follows. Three Van de Graaff generators are charged with different amounts of charge. Three locations, A, B, and C, are shown. 
the relative charge of each generator expressed in terms of Q and the relative distance of each location from the generator's center expressed in terms of R are shown. Rank the three locations according to their electric field strength. Okay, so we take a look at these. Here's what we have to we recognize. When Q gets three times bigger, that's going to make E three times bigger. When R gets two times bigger, R squared, that's four times bigger. We're dividing, so it's really making E uh, divided by four or four times smaller. So here's how I'm going to recommend writing this. Okay, so as you look at each one, when Q increases, that increases the numerator. So we're just going to put the amount that it increases the numerator there. It's going to be three times bigger because it's three times the value of Q. The charge on this Van de Graaff generator is three times greater. R is just R, so that's one. One squared is one. And that goes in the denominator. R goes in the denominator. So we're just going to write one, three over one. Okay, so that's kind of the ratio of what's going on here compared to just Q and just R. So here on our second one in B, we see Q is just Q. So we're just going to put a 1 up here because it's just Q. It didn't get any bigger or smaller. And we see 2 times R. Well, 2 times R, if we square 2, that's 4. So this is going to be 4 times smaller, 1 fourth. Okay, and finally... Uh, we have um, our one here. We have 0.5 up in the top. So 0.5Q, so that goes in the numerator. R is just 1. 1 squared is 1, so we put that there. So if we take a look at these, now we can see which one's the biggest. We see the biggest one is 3. 3 is bigger than 1 quarter or 1 half. 1 half divided by 1 is 1 half. Um, and so this would be the greatest then one half is more than one quarter. So this would be what they call the middlest electric field. And then this one would be the smallest or least electric field. Okay, so I think I believe they use the term smallest uh, electric field because it's one quarter of Q and R. All right, let's do our second example over here. So we see that we have four Q for the first one. So that's gonna make the numerator four times bigger because it's four times bigger than because Q is four times as big. The denominator is uh, three times as big as R. So three squared is nine. So this is going to be nine times bigger. And it goes in the denominator because of the inverse relationship of distance and electric field. The next one is just Q and R. So that's like what we're measuring everything compared. So it's just going to be one over one. And then here Q goes in the numerator, it's directly proportional, and the distance goes in the denominator, distance is squared, so we have 2, 2 getting squared, and so that 2 squared is 4, so that goes there. Okay, so if you aren't sure which one's bigger, uh, 4 ninths or 3 fourths, remember you can get the uh, least common denominator, which in this case would be the two things multiplied together. And so you would have, uh, this would be, I could have picked an easier one, huh? 16, 36, 36. and this one would be 27, 36. Okay, so I just, uh, the lowest common denominator was 9 times 4, so I multiplied both the numerator and the denominator here by 4 to get this, and both the numerator and the denominator there by 9 to get this. And we can see 2736 is more than 13, 1636. Or you could plug in a calculator and get a decimal and just, you just see which one is better, a little bit simpler that way. But we can see that the greatest is 1. Okay, so the greatest is 1. Um, and then this one would be the middlest because 27 is bigger than 16. And this one would be the smallest. Okay. And so that's how you do the ranking tasks uh, level. The master level is called case studies. And in this case, we've got uh, the same idea, but we've only got two of them. But not only do we have to determine which one is greater, the electric field strength is greatest at location, and we put A or B here. 
but we have to say by a factor of what. And so now it's going to come in really handy that we learned how to do those uh, fractions there so we can compare the ratio or the factor that it's getting bigger by. Okay, so let's go ahead and do what we've done here. So this is Q is twice as big, so 2 goes in the numerator. R is just R, so that's 1. So that's going to be a nice uh, ratio there. And then this one we see we have 2 in the numerator and 4R. Remember the 4 here, 4R is going to be squared. So that's going to be 16. Okay. So we can clearly see 2 is going to be bigger than 2 sixteenths. We could simplify this down to 1 eighth. Okay. And so we can see that uh, A is going to be the biggest. Okay. Because A is 2 and this is less than 1. Um, but then by what factor we want to get our common uh, denominator. So we're going to turn 2 over 1 to 16 over 8. Okay, so when we compare, let's use green, when we compare these two fractions, both of them have 8 in the denominator, it's easy to see that this one is 16 times bigger than this. So 16 to 1, or we can just write that it is a factor of 16. So A, the electric field is greatest at location A by a factor of 16. It's 16 times bigger than the electric field at location B. All right, let's do one more example. 2 over 1, because the Q is 2, the R is 1. The Q is 9. R is 2. <coughs> Excuse me. R is 2, but the 2 has to be squared, so that's 4. Then we want to get common denominators, so we got 8 over 4. 2 over 1 is 8 over 4. And so we can see we have a ratio of 8 to 9. 9 being bigger, so B is the stronger, and the ratio is 9 eighths. Okay, put the bigger one above the littler one because it's getting bigger, so it has to be bigger than 1. Otherwise, it would be smaller. So it's greatest at B by a factor of 9 over 8. Okay, it's just how many times bigger it is, and it's nine eighths bigger. All right, the final level um, that you have to do uh, no longer deals with changing the charge. The charge in the center here will be constant, but they've measured out, okay, um, the uh, distance. So the surface of this is considered one away, the first line is considered two away. This is considered three away. That line's considered four away. So then we just take a look at it. We read our question. We should read our question first. The value of the electric field strength at location X is, and it gives you a number uh, measured in Newtons per millicoulomb. Uh, determine the electric field strength in Newtons per millicoulomb accurate to the second decimal plate, place, like point and then two numbers on the surface of the Van de Graaff generator at location Y. Um, by the way, you don't have to put like, if it's eight, you don't have to put 8.00, you can just put eight. I actually haven't tried putting 8.00. You could experiment with it, see if you can do that. Um, so we take a look and we see what factor this is gonna change by. Well, X is starting out at the third level, okay? Y is at the first level. Okay, first distance. So x is three times farther away. But we're going from x. Okay, x was our starting position. And we're looking for what y will be. So y is one third of what um, x is. Okay. But if we're going to, if, if the distance is getting three times smaller, we look at the relationship down here between electric field and radius or distance, and uh, you can see now why they call it radius. Um, if the radius is being divided by three, we have to square it, so it's like dividing the radius by radius squared by nine, but then it is inverse, so instead of dividing by nine, we're gonna have to multiply times nine. 
So we'd take 29.1.1. Uh, and that is newtons per newtons per millicoulomb. Okay, times nine, and nine is just a factor, so we don't need to uh, write um, uh, units with it. And that way, we end up with the same units here. Um, and we uh, punch that into the calculator, and we get two hundred and sixty-one point nine. There were no other decimals, so we didn't have to round off. But remember, if you do get to the third number after the decimal, you would round that third number off, so you only have two numbers after the decimal. Okay, and that would count it as being right. And so that's the idea. Look at look for uh, what ratio it changed from x to y. I think it always goes from x to y. In this case, you had to divide by 3, going from 3 to 1. Divide by 3. And so then you looked at the inverse square relationship divided by 3, r squared divided by 9, 1 over r squared, instead of dividing by 9, we multiply by 9, which is what we did right here, okay, to get our final answer. All right, so uh, very similar to what you did in the last concept builder on Coulomb's law, except for our equation is slightly different because we're now dealing with electric fields. Uh, and so you see the uh, electric field equation here to create the electric field around a given charge. Uh, en enjoy puzzling out these uh, little puzzles and learning a little bit about electric fields and the world around you as you complete this concept builder. We'll see you next time on Scientific Adventures of the Beard Man. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already.